Hi, Matrix. Um, today's lesson is going to be about negative feedback and how that links to the thyroid gland and the pancreas. And I thought it would be most useful to focus in on the negative feedback on these two rather than just focusing in on the details of the two glands. Because if you look at your exam guidelines, you will see that it says that you need to be able to explain or describe um, how the negative feedback um, actually works in these two glands. Now, just to do a little bit of quick revision on what exactly negative feedback is, it's effectively a system that the body will use in order to maintain homeostasis. Remember, there is a norm for everything in terms of your body temperature, um, your testosterone levels, um, your fat levels. There is a, a norm for everything. And in order for negative feedback to work, you need to have three things at play at all time. And you always need to have some kind of sensor, whether that be a sensory cell or a receptor. In this case, because we are dealing with endocrine glands, we're going to refer to uh, sensors as sensory cells. Generally, they are found inside of particular organs. You then go on to having some kind of control. And it can either be a control center or it can be a corrective mechanism. And that could be because the stimulus that occurred earlier is affecting um, the set point, the homeostasis of the body, and now we need to correct that. Once a substance, which in this case would be the hormone, is produced, it is then sent to the effector. And the effector in this instance could be a muscle, um, it could even be another gland, and some kind of change is brought about in the body. And then that brings about the response to the stimulus. Now, if we look at it uh, in even more detail in another diagram, I quite like this picture because it shows your homeostasis um, as a seesaw in that um, levels do move up and do move down. And depending on how they're moving is how your body is going to respond. For example, if the imbalance that occurs in um, your body, in your homeostatic level, is an increase, it notes that the stimulus will produce a change. That change is detected by some kind of receptor. That receptor is sent along a afferent pathway to some kind of control center um, where decisions or choices are made. And keeping in mind, we are doing the endocrine system, so that the choices being made will be done by glands. Those glands then will secrete a substance, in this case a hormone. It will be sent along a pathway to the effector organ and the effector and the target organ will then make the change and it will bring back the balance and the um, seesaw will go back to being level. The same can be done for when there is a negative imbalance in that the seesaw is going down. You would follow the same steps um, except instead of secreting more hormone, you will start to secrete less hormone. Keep in mind that we are trying to maintain homeostasis and this is all linked to negative feedback and it is a loop um, and you are always making small changes. You're either secreting more hormone and when that gets too high, you start to secrete less hormone in response to that. And now we're going to focus in on how does negative feedback look when we refer to it in the thyroid gland. So, the thyroid gland is closely associated with um, your metabolic rate. And this can be linked to lots of things in your metabolism, um, but most importantly, it is linked to your growth. So, let's say, for example, there is now a drop in your thyroxine level. First of all, if we go through the steps, you're always going to need a receptor. In this case, what is going to receive the information that we are dropping in thyroxine is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is then going to use its corrective measure or its control center to produce um, thyroid stimulating hormone. 
this is a stimulating hormone, which effectively means it's a starting up hormone. It's going to tell the next structure what to do. Once we've gone from our um, corrective measure, we now need to go to the effector, which in this case is the thyroid gland. Now the thyroid gland is going to use iodine from your diet to produce thyroxine. That thyroxine then goes off to the body and it is used to maintain your basal metabolic rate. Now as this level of thyroxine increases, this is going to have a negative feedback effect on the pituitary gland because the thyroxine levels are going to go up, which is going to then tell the pituitary gland that there is enough thyroxine. So we don't want to keep making more. So the pituitary gland senses the higher levels of thyroxine and now the um, thyroid stimulating hormone starts to decrease. And it will continue to do this until we go back to its original homeostatic level. If we dip too low again in thyroxine, then we start the process all over again. More thyroid stimulating hormone is made. The thyroid then makes more thyroxine. And that increase in thyroxine starts the negative feedback loop once more. Keeping in mind, once again, whenever we do these explanations around homeostasis, we should always include at the end of our answer that we have returned back to our norm or our set point. Now we are going to move on to the pancreas, which is definitely a gland that we are very familiar with and we are very familiar with the negative feedback system that is associated with insulin and um, glucagon. So to recap, what is the negative feedback system that is working within the pancreas? Yet again, we always start off with the set point and there is some kind of stimulus. And in this case, in this example, someone has eaten a cupcake, which then increases um, the glucose levels in the blood. And if we use our three letters, which is supposed to be the receptor, the control or corrective mechanism, and then the effector, we can label this diagram um, in that way. And you can see how those three things come into play in every negative feedback loop. So we've now had the stimulus of the blood glucose level rising. And so our receptor in this case is going to be the pancreas, in particular the beta cells. And the beta cells are going to release insulin. Insulin is the corrective measure or the control that is going to occur in order for us to return to our set point. That insulin is then going to be sent either to the body cells or to the liver each of these are the effectors, and we are going to store it and convert it from glucose to glycogen. That then allows the blood glucose levels to decline, and yet again, we return back to our set point. Now, this whole top section of this diagram is one part of the negative feedback loop. Because we know that we are going to continue to store sugar if our sugar levels are too high. How do we kick into the second part of this loop is if the sugar levels drop too low, then we need to return yet again back to our set point. And in this instance, perhaps it's been a very long time since you've eaten. And so what happens is the receptors... In the pancreas, this time it's going to be the alpha cells in the pancreas are going to receive the information that you don't have enough um, blood sugar, it's dropping. They are going to release glucagon. Glucagon is the corrective measure from the control center. That is then sent to your effector, which in this case is the liver. And the liver is going to convert glycogen into glucose, it's going to raise the blood level and we are going to return back to set point or back to the norm. Effectively, the pancreas has two negative feedback systems happening at the same time. One that is regulating higher blood sugar levels and one that is regulating lower blood sugar levels. 
This particular section on the pancreas is largely revision, considering that we have done this topic in length in grade 11, particularly things on diabetes we should already know and be familiar with, and to an extent this should largely be revision. Please get to know your negative feedback systems very, very well using the terminology like receptor, effector, control mechanism, norm, set point, etc. And the reason for that is these are the key terms that you need to include in your description when explaining a negative feedback mechanism, which in all likelihood you will be asked to explain at least one of the many negative feedbacks that we've done before. And you will need to be able to provide at times up to six to seven different worthy points in order to get full marks.